a small group today. Only, what, 600? a.m. and good morning everyone it's Saturday January 26th and today we're going over to the first grasshopper adventure series ride of the year this is 2019 the ride starts in Ukiah California and it goes up a road called Comp Chi Ukiah Road that's a paved road it's a paved climb and from there, it turns onto Low Gap Road. Low Gra Gap Road, I've never ridden before, but from what I've been told, it's a gravel road, and uh, there's a series of climbs on the course, and a very large descent at the very end. Uh, something like that. I don't know exact details. I'll find out more as I'm riding it. But the ride is uh, approximately 42 miles long, so it's a very short, distance uh, but it's 5800 feet of climbing some of which is off-road climbing uh, so there will definitely be it'll definitely be a challenging course uh, I've heard somewhere in the neighborhood of three and a half hours is typical so uh, we'll see how we do I was gonna ride my fit cycles bike and I had worked on it all week getting it ready and then last night uh, I was looking at how beautiful it is and I thought why am I getting this thing all dirty on the first day? So, okay, correction on the route. I made, I said Kamchi, Ukiah Road. That's, that was incorrect. I just checked the map. The route goes up Or Springs Road from Ukiah to Low Gap Road back to Ukiah. It's about 42 miles total and 5,800 feet of climbing. Now that's what we're gonna be riding today and uh, we're getting some coffee going now. 
I'll be on the road soon, and I will see you over at Ukiah High School where the start of the ride begins. So let's head over there shortly and uh, get our packets and head over to the start line. It'll be an interesting day. I'll see you right back. See you in like less than five. Okay. Five. How about you? Good. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's January. That's, yeah. you're, here, you're here. I'm ready for a January grasshopper. <laughs> How about you? Good, yeah, I'm here. Where'd Sally go? Uh, I think he ran to the bathroom and then a mechanic. Okay. Uh oh, he's got a mechanical problem already? He's got some shifting thing that he wants cleared up. Oh, shoot. I don't think it's a big thing. I know, I said to him, I'm like, you wait until here? I'm surprised. Yeah, usually he's yeah, he's, he's on, on it. it, usually. Yep. Okay, well, I'm gonna look for Javier and uh, ride around and look, warm up a little bit. All right. All right, see ya, see you out there. Yep, absolutely, good to see you. You too. John, hey, there you what's are. up? <laughs> Dude, your bike doesn't look the same, does it? I, <laughs> it's a transformation. Yeah. How are you? Doing well. Good to see you. Yeah, I was going to ride, but I thought, you know, I want to give it a little time to get everything sorted out before bringing it out today, just in case. Yeah. Yeah. How's it going? You ready? I'm ready. Okay. You going to go warm up, John? Are you guys riding out there? I'm just going to ride. Are we going to come yeah. back? No, not here. No? Okay, I better leave this here then. Yeah, I'll uh, cruise out there with you. John and I will go straight to the back. Need to be up front. It's a small group today. Only what, 600? <laughs> I saw Curtis here today. Curtis you did? Dang. Check it out. And there he is, right there. Here's Sally. Sally, what's happening? What's your last name? I'm gonna get up right by Sally, wherever he's going. So this is the start of the season. There's, I believe, six races or rides, if you want to call it that. Well. Let me say it. We'll say this differently. There's basically there's six rides. Some people race it. And some people ride it. It's it's an adventure series. So it's kind of up to you how you want to do it. I'm here with Therese and Miss Cools, and I wanted to do a recap of the ride with her. Uh, she wasn't involved, but uh, but I'm very curious about how it went. Yeah. I have so many questions to ask you about it. Yeah. So let's uh, let's go into it. It was a really fun day. Okay, first can you tell us about the route, um, what the terrain was like, and what the um, profile was like? Yeah, well the ride was uh, about 42 miles, so pretty short in terms of mileage, but it was about 5,500 feet of climbing, and so it was very hilly terrain. And the start of the ride was on pavement, okay. and so about half the ride was pavement, and then the other half was uh, fire roads dirt fire roads. And whereabouts was this route, did this route take place? What county? What? Um... Yeah, so it started in uh, Ukiah, the city of Ukiah, which is in Mendocino County, and it went up a road called Or Springs Road. And it, the, that was the paved road. And then eventually we turned on to a road called Low Gap, and that's the name of the ride. Good. But that's actually the name of the road that we were riding on as well. And that road is all dirt all the way back to Ukiah. So it made kind of a big loop out out west of Ukiah and then back to Ukiah. So big loop. Wow. For, well, not big loop, it's only 42 miles. Sounds fun. Yeah. It's been uh, kind of wet, rainy conditions the last couple weeks. What were the conditions like on the on the ride? Oh. Yeah, the ride conditions were, were perfect, actually. The weather, so we've had rain 
up until about a week ago, we had a lot of rain, and so we were, everybody was kind of getting nervous about how muddy it would be. But we had a week of, of, of break from the rain, and so it had a chance to dry out. There was still a little bit of mud in spots, so it wasn't perfect, but uh, the weather was perfect, but there was definitely some muddy kind of rutted spots where you had to be really careful because, uh, yeah, you know, if you weren't paying attention, you could come around a corner and you'd, you'd be right into a really slippery corner, or you'd get into a rut that, you know, as more people ride through it, it creates more defined ruts. And if you didn't follow that same line, you could easily get thrown off the bike. Wow. So um, what bike did you decide to ride and how did it handle yeah. that? Well, you know, I was really, I was going to ride my Fitz uh, cycles, the new bike, but the night before, or it was Friday night, I had it all ready to go. Uh, there was a few little things I kind of wanted to sort out and I haven't ridden it much. So I was on the fence about riding it. And uh, I decided at the last minute to not take any chances. And I pulled out my hardtail mountain bike and went ahead and threw on some uh, some compass tire, some 44 millimeter wide slicks. I knew that the ride wasn't gonna be, since we had dry weather, and I knew that there wouldn't be a lot of uh, technical terrain that the slicks Thank would do you. really well in the paved section. And then I've gotten pretty Good. used to riding them even off Except road, so I felt comfortable using them. And so anyway, I made that call. I went ahead and rode the Okay, my and do you feel like it was a good choice? Yeah, because you know, the thing was, is when you get back home after riding in that <laughs> muddy, on the, through those mud puddles, just the thought of having a brand new bike covered in mud, you know, at the end of the day, I felt really happy with that decision. Okay, good. All right, well, this is the start of uh, the, the dirt section here. Looks pretty dry, actually. Uh, a lot drier, a lot drier than I was expecting. So we'll see. A lot of climbing on that paved road, but wasn't too bad. Oh, feels good out here. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Look at this. It's not bad. Not bad at all. Maybe I'll tell everyone about how they did the timing on the ride. Okay. So there was about 420 people finishing the ride. I don't know how many people signed up, but there was 420 finishers. And the way they kept track of all the timing was they actually gave us timing chips this time, which was pretty cool. And you had to mount it onto the handlebar. Um, so we did that and uh, that kept track of our time and then at the end of the ride there was like a big party kind of celebration mm -hmm. type of thing. Like those brakes. Favorite. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, those are cool. Paul. Yeah. What's up? How are you doing? What's this right here on my right? What's up? How you doing? Travis! Good to see you. Dude! How are you? Riding strong today, dude. Woo. I almost called you, man. I, I can't believe I'm right next to you right now. <laughs> what, what happened? Did you get a flat or something? No, no. Yeah, right. Is this Miguel right here? Hey, there he is. Oh, yeah. I thought they gave you a head start. Sweet, Travis, how have you been? Good, man. Same dude, dizzy at work. Oh, yeah? And all that good stuff, so. Yeah. How about you? Did you get your rig set up yet? I did. I was going to ride it today, 
but uh, I put a crank on that's the Q factor is it's enormous. Really? I feel like I'm I have to turn my heels in uh -huh. just to feel like a normal pedal stroke, and uh, so that was like, nah, I don't want to. And it's so new, I don't want to get it dirty yet. Yeah, it's dirty. Yeah. Uh, what were a couple of the highlights of the ride? What did you enjoy about the ride? Yeah, there were several highlights. The, uh, the first climb right out of the gate was six and a half miles of fairly steep climbing, actually. When I looked at the profile, it looked like it wasn't going to be real steep. On average, like the average gradient didn't look bad, but when you actually were riding it, it was kind of steep and then it would level off a little bit and then it was steep and then the descent the final descent was a highlight because you come up after you so you do this little climb then you drop down on this dirt road and then you do a you're doing some rollers and then there's this last final climb it's four miles of dirt climb and it was punishing after all the climbing you did and all the ruts you've ridden through and you know your body's starting to feel the fatigue and you're doing this four mile climb and then all of a sudden you finally get to the top, you come around the corner and there's this, this amazing view. Mm -hmm. You can see, you're looking east, you see all of like the valley down into Ukiah and it's just all of a sudden, the whole bike ride and race, everything goes out the window and all you can focus on is that beautiful view for that half a second. And then all of a sudden like, you come back to reality and you realize like, I'm on a bike race and I need to keep moving. <laughs> and so then it's this downhill and it's downhill for, the downhill was like over 20 minutes long, downhill. Sounds like it all paid off. Flying too. It wasn't <laughs> like we were going slow down this hill. We were yeah. flying. I was following a guy on a hardtail mountain bike who was following a guy on a, like some kind of a gravel racing bike. He had big, we, we all had, they, both of those guys had much bigger tires and they both were knobby tires. And we were, it was a dirt descent and we were flying down this. We were doing over 30 miles an hour oh, down that wow. descent. And you go around these corners and there's nothing down there. It just, it literally just drops off. See, if you were off that, if you went off that corner, you are done. And, but you know, you don't even think about it. You're just going so fast. You're just focusing on what you're doing. And uh, lots of like uh, washboard and stuff. And oh, okay. Yeah. Lots of washboard. A lot of washboard, a lot of, and I mean, I really appreciated having that shock on the front <laughs> at that point. Yeah. And then you come down and you're just going down and down and down and you just think, man, where, where is Ukiah at? And then all of a sudden, like you hit this little strip of pavement and then literally like you come around a little corner and there's the finish line and it's over. Yeah. It's amazing. It's a weird feeling to <laughs> just, think that you still have like five more miles to go on the yeah. pavement and all of a sudden you come around the corner and boom, there's the finish line. And I'm like, oh, there's the finish line and uh, it's over, wow. done. Yeah. And you're right back to the start. You're right yeah. back to the parking lot where you started. Amazing. <laughs> it's so it's amazing. Like, It, Daniel very good take me through it talk me through it what happened well it was really interesting because at the start all my friends like elbowed me out of the time the timer yeah strip. you know so I had to like loop, loop back. back no get in line go back through it and then catch him again and you still beat me <laughs> how did that happen <laughs> Dang. The chain. no and I still, the guys who elbowed me out, I took them right at the, right at the, at the, the strip. Yeah. The strip. Good job. Sweet. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot of fun. Good day. I was so worried about getting a flat, but I never, I didn't get any flats. Me neither. I had to drop the chain, I said. Yeah. That was it. All right, so tell me all about it. How was it, Aaron? Um, it was great, Mr. Wildberry. What'd you win? <laughs> nice. How was the course? It was great. That descent was amazing. A little bit bumpy. Tight corners. A lot of gravel. But honestly, the day climb was great. Yeah. And any mechanical problems on the bike? Today? Drop the chain twice. Oh my god. Yep. Got twisted up the first time. We had uh, to have a 
someone. Moto man, he helped me out. He yeah. Pretty lucky. He's right behind me. You don't drop a chain if you have a fixed gear. No, you don't. You so what happened here? What is this? What is this I'm seeing? This is uh, Santa Cruz. Pretty cool that you got your fixed gear front gear on there. Cool. And uh, no flat tires? No flats this time around. But you drop your chain twice. Drop your chain twice. So. But, you know, everyone needs a break. It's fine. Yeah. You know, a little break. Cool. Thank you. Oh, that reminds me of what I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Um, what did you decide to do for nutrition? I'm always interested in what people do for these really uh, intense rides. Yeah, so for nutrition, I made, um, so on the 200K that we did, I made a huge mistake um, carrying that big, huge bag of peanuts and dates and stuff that I couldn't really consume under pressure. So I was like, nope, not doing that this time. I'm going, I guess I'm going to buy into the, the sugary packets or whatever, you know, the gels. So what I did is I carried two gels and I filled up my water bottle with uh, like three tablespoons of brown sugar and mixed it in with the water. Okay. Brown sugar mm. tastes really good in water. Yeah. It actually tastes like, it kind of tasted like iced tea. Yeah. So that helped a lot. And then of course at the, so I drank that water bottle. I ate the two or you consumed the two gels, which were goo energy um, gels. And then I had uh, Osmo had a nutrition. Osmo Nutrition is like a, if you're not familiar, it, it, they make sports drinks, kind of okay. like, it's kind of like um, powder you mix into your sports drinks. Um, so did you have any issues with the bike? Did you have any flat tires or mechanical problems? No, but I do want to apologize to whoever you are that was riding next to me. I am, I really do apologize. Uh, uh -oh. My bike was creaking really loudly. For whatever reason, I when I turned on the low gap, my rear derailleur was just making this crunching so sound and I'm like oh no and I didn't want to stop because I knew I wouldn't be able to fix it anyway yeah. right and all I had was my little multi-tool so uh, when I got home after the ride I checked it over and I found out that what was causing that it wouldn't, and it wouldn't have been anything I could have fixed anyway that's bicycle you gotta make that's what makes bicycling whatever. fun yeah and whatever you end up bringing you just make it work alright like that we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching <laughs> Bye now.